So I, uh, I want to start out the first segment today, combining the first segment with the quote of the day. Like I said, yesterday I put out uh, a video, a, a very blunt um, with some profanity in it. There won't be any in this one. This will be a little easier one to show for those of you that are watching the video versus getting the audio podcast. Um, but some very blunt advice is to getting the hell out of the cities and staying out of this conflict. And some of the responses that I got to that in the comments on the YouTube video are absolutely asinine, but I understand where they come from. And I, I, what I think you have is people that are doing exactly what the enemy wants them to do. Or at least they're talking about doing exactly what the enemy wants them to do. And so they're running into a conflict with the wrong people at the wrong time in the wrong place, in a place of the enemy's choosing. This is a huge mistake. So what I wanted to start out with is a quote uh, from Sun Tzu, which is, Thus, what is of supreme importance in a war is to attack the enemy's strategy. Not to attack the enemy. To attack the enemy's strategy. Now, I think what's going on in the, the situation we're in right now is the people that you see out in the streets, and I'm not defending them, I'm not saying anything about them that would be considered redeemable. So please understand that. I'm, I'm, I'm just examining the situation from a standpoint of clearly there's an enemy here. And we need to identify both the enemy and the enemy's strategy. That's of, of, of supreme importance in all this. That we identify both of those correctly. Because my item of the day today, uh, which we'll, we'll cover more in depth at the end of the show, is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Okay? The book itself. And so I have, on the post for that, another quote by Sun Tzu. And that is, Victorious warriors win first and then go to war while defeated warriors go to war, war, war first and then seek to win. These are two really important things to think about when it comes to getting into any kind of conflict in the current situation that we find ourselves in with riots in our streets. And what I believe, and, and I think there's good evidence for this, is that when you guys say things like, well, these rioters are being bust in. They're being bust in. They're coming in armed. They're coming in with an agenda they're coming in to incite riots. I, I completely agree. So these people aren't wealthy. These people don't have lots of resources. Translation, someone's paying the bills. Okay, so translation to so that means that the, that the person who's paying the bills is the true enemy. So then if we do not identify the enemy first... And then we go into conflict against the wrong enemy or the wrong part of the enemy. If we attack the wrong enemy and we do not attack the enemy's strategy, we're setting ourselves up to fail. See, when I was a young man, I was in the United States Army, I was deployed to a place called Honduras, and I had a really great first sergeant. He was an E-7, but he was our first sergeant, our top. Uh, those in the military know what, you know, kind of that, that affectionate term for your first sergeant, top. And uh, he kind of took me and several other young soldiers under his wings and I think he all he knew that the, this particular group of soldiers that he had doing this were all soldiers who, who did not have really great family lives growing up. There's a lot of soldiers that you can say that about. Some have fantastic families and so, it seems like hey, that's, that's the thing with the military. You either come from a fantastic family or a broken one. So he had this, this group of about four of us from this broken family, and he would give us a book to read, and he'd say, y'all can either read this book, and we can talk about it, or I can give you extra duty. It worked on the other three guys kind of needed that. Me, deployed to Honduras, I had nothing to do except work and wait to be done with it. And it was, not, it was almost like being in a little minimum security prison. So I was happy to read that book, and I learned a lot from my discussions with him. But... What he told us was that we, if we looked around in Honduras at the place that we were in, that people think that that can't happen in the United States. But the truth was, and this is all the way back in 1992, okay, so this is a while ago, there were already places like that in the United States. There were already places that were that broken down in the United States. And that 
we were refusing to even look at it, to acknowledge it. It was like a person with this guy. Was, our, our top came from a medical background. He was a medical NCO. And uh, he said that it was like cancer. And if you didn't treat cancer, eventually it spread through the entire person and it killed them. And that if we continued to ignore this cancer that was in our own country, that this squalor that was around us in, in, in Honduras would one day befall our own nation and it would get really bloody. And when that happened, we would have to pick a side. And when it did, we would want to make sure not only did we pick a side, but we, we followed the words of the art of war, and we chose the time and place and the way in which we picked that side. And what I've gotten in response to this type of warning is, well, you know, we're Christian patriots, and, and we need to stand up against evil. See, you're, you're, that, that's an appeal to authority. You don't know exactly what God wants you to do. All you can do is take all the information you have and then weigh that against what God wants. There's no place in the Bible or, 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 or any religious text that says, in 2020, when BLM riots in, in Seattle, this is what you are to do. And they'll say we're supposed to confront evil. But how, where, why, and in which way? See, God gives us an innate intelligence and expects us to use it not to appeal to authority and then use a catchphrase to justify an action or a suggested action. So there's a lot of things that I want you to think about with my call to get out of the cities. First and foremost is it's not just about being in a conflict. It's not just about getting physically hurt. It's not just about potentially having your life taken or having the life of a family member taken. It's also about protecting your investments. So no one, no one starts standing on moral ground when I'm like, hey, you know, right now would probably be a good time to get out of some of your stocks. Or, to, you know, like back years ago when, when the gas stations put up signs that said we buy silver, I was like, if you're holding silver like an ETF or something like that, if it's not long-term in a box somewhere, sell it now. And don't buy any. Because when you see that, you know that the bottom's about to fall out of the market. How does that pertain to this? Well, because if you're in these cities, this shit's not going to get any better anytime soon. And even if the riots go away tomorrow... The exodus out of the cities is happening. The cities have been destroyed. We have cities with, with homeless people shitting in the streets, and that's okay. People shooting up. It's going to be whatever you can get for your property now, you're going to be able to get less for it next year and the year after. These things are in a terminal decline. Unless you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna wait it out for 8 to 10 years, you're going to watch the value of your property, and if you have a business, your business going to decline. So part of it is about preservation of your assets and moving your business, your assets, your money, your holdings somewhere else while you can. Because when you have people driving from L.A. to Nevada to get a U-Haul and going back to L.A. to pick their shit up and leave, that's a big-ass warning sign. So part of it is about protecting your, your money. And then the other part is understanding, again, that real enemy is not in the streets. The real enemy is not in the streets. You can't go fight the enemy in the street because the enemy's not in the street. The enemy's little pawn bitches are in the street. And the enemy put them there. And the enemy is smart. The enemy knows it will evoke an emotional response from you. The enemy knows the more the cities burn, the more windows are broken, the more people are hurt, the more that good people who just wish to be left alone will be enraged. And they know that sooner or later, those good people will come to the fight. Which means they want you to come to the fight. If you do this, you are doing what your enemy wants you to do. And that was the other side of choosing the time and the place of the battle and only engaging in the battle when victory is known to be a sure thing. When you recognize to do it, then you understand when it's being done to you. And when you're doing that to the enemy, what are you doing? You're setting a trap. This is a trap. You don't walk into the enemy's trap. You draw the enemy into your own trap. So stay out of these conflicts. Do not kit up and go into these cities. Don't do this. There actually may come a time when it makes sense to go at them. 
It's not now. This is their time, their choosing, their location, their place, their trap. If you insert yourself into it, you've gone into their trap. I've had law enforcement officers, since I did that video yesterday, say, I am ashamed to say this as a police officer in Portland, Seattle, etc. But Jack is right. If you go there and do what he's telling you not to do, while we're standing down for the rioters, we will arrest you. Because we have to, because that's what our orders are. It's a trap. You don't go to the enemy's trap. Especially when the enemy's not even there. The enemy's lackeys. The enemy's bitches are there. And when you go where the enemy wants you to go, they're moving you, and that makes you the pawn. They want you to go there. You do what the enemy doesn't want, and you draw the enemy to what you want. That's the fundamental of the art of war. The next thing, this is a plea to all of you that keep objecting. But we're, we got to stay. We can't move. Whatever. Okay, fine. If you can't move, then you got to be smart about how you stay. I'll let, I mean, I understand some of you just can't. But I think some of you don't want to. Those are different things. And if you want to watch the value of your property go to shit, if you want you want your bit watch your business be destroyed because you don't move it while you can, while you have an opportunity to. And I know it's a trap. It's a trap. So they did it during the freaking pandemic to make it harder for you to make that choice. That's why when you set up the kill zone, the L-shaped ambush, if you can, when the enemy walks into it, you want them to have to go uphill to get out of it. And the only thing you can do in that situation is charge the enemy. And it usually means you're going to die. But it's the only thing you can do. So you stay, You don't want to get in the kill box. You set up the kill box. So with that in mind, I want you to try to logically walk through what some of you are suggesting and come out with it being a good decision. Take whatever scenario you want and say, this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I'm going to ask other people to do. And this is what we should all do. We should all be Kyle, Kyle's, right? We should all put all our gear on and go in and confront the enemy. We should all do a big countermarch. We should all do guard the buildings, whatever. Then think about what happens next. Think about the next step. And the next step. And the next step. This is freaking chess. It's not checkers. It's not, uh, I moved. Uh, they moved. Uh, you need to think. I move, they move, I move, they move. All of the confrontation scenarios, if you run them through your mind logically, they all end up in a situation where the enemy gets what the enemy wants, which means you lost. You lost. When you fight an enemy where they want you to fight them, the way they want you to fight them, at the time that they want you to fight them, you lose because they're practicing the art of war and you're not. So I, I, I'm open to it, though. I'd love to hear any of you that say that we need to stand and fight and confront and all this. Okay, fine. Then you give me the scenario. Explain to me what you want and what it looks like and what they do in response to what you do and how that plays out and bring it to a place where it makes sense to do it. And if you can't do that, then you need to start asking yourself why you're doing it. I know why you're doing it because you're being manipulated. Because the people that are actually doing this that are thousands of miles away, bankrolling it, want you to do it because they know that if they can get you to engage and escalate the conflict, they can get what they want and they know you're going to lose. It doesn't matter how many of them you kill. You're going to lose the objective because you're attacking what you perceive as the enemy versus the enemy's strategy. The strategy of the enemy is to destroy the city then you get out of the city before the city is destroyed and you build cities where they are not destroying cities. You build community where they are not destroying community. They are going to lay waste to it. It's like trying to defend against them dropping a hydrogen bomb on the city and you're going to stand there with your AR because it's the right thing and, and you're a Christian patriot or whatever. All you're going to get is a mushroom cloud. It's a scorched earth policy. And if you stay in a scorched earth city during a scorched earth policy, you become charcoal. Get out of the way. Choose the confrontation that makes sense and attack the enemy's strategy. Or don't. But I promise you, none of you are going to be able to walk through that scenario for me and have it work out. None of you. 
I, again, I'm, I'm open to it. Catchphrases, appeals to authority, or how you end up dead, broke, or both. You know, I'm hearing people say, send, say some of the same catchphrases about this that were used to sell us into a war overseas. And didn't I tell you last week the dogs of war are doing what the dogs of war do and have been doing for a century overseas, and now they're doing it right here in our backyard? So why wouldn't it be that, don't you think those same dogs of war, don't you think the people actually bankrolling this, don't you think the people that actually can capitalize on this, don't you think they maybe are seeding those catchphrases, incentivizing those catchphrases, giving you those ideas and making you think that they're your own? Every time we've run into a, a conflict on a catchphrase, we fought the enemy <laughs> on a place of their choosing, and it cost us dearly in blood and treasure. And we got nothing to show for it. You can talk about how Trump wiped out the caliphate or whatever. We have nothing to show for this. The United States is in not one shred better a position today than we were 20 years ago when all this shit storm started. We're not better off for Afghanistan. We're not better off for Iraq. And we were led into that shit with a catchphrase. Don't lead yourself into your own conflict on your own country in your own country with a catchphrase. God's not going to fix your business. God gave you a brain. And based on whatever religion you follow, God gave you some advice. But you're supposed to make intelligent decisions and stay morally upright as you do. Not sit in the middle of something that's on fire. Some of you sound like a person who Noah would have said, hey man, get on the ark. And you said, you know what? I'm a Christian patriot. I know there weren't Christians yet, right? Right? I'm a patriot. I'm a patriot and believer. God will fix this for me as the ark floats away and you drown. You have to use your brains in this, folks. And I'll end with a different quote by another Asian philosopher. This one, Confucius. Before you embark on a, on a journey of revenge, dig two graves. What's motivating people is anger. And when anger motivates you, in the words of Star Wars, right, it's the dark side. It's absolutely the dark side. And once you're led by that darkness, the only place for you to go is into darkness. And once you're drawn into that conflict that way, no matter how many of them you strike down, you will lose. And that is the enemy setting the trap. Motivating you with anger. Because when one responds in anger, one is not thinking clearly. So, again guys, I'm talking about protecting the money that you have invested in your business or your property. I'm talking about protecting your family. And I'm talking about being able to build a future that you want. If you're in a Flashpoint city, I don't care what you do. You're not going to walk me through a scenario that involves not having the value of your property go to complete garbage. Not ending up in a position where you'll wish you would have left. And I'm open to being wrong about this. And I could be. The reason I'm saying get out is because the preponderance of evidence is so to the extreme of that being the right decision right now. that it only makes sense to do so. It's up to you what to do in the end. But remember, <laughs> you have to attack the enemy's strategy, not the enemy. And to do that, you have to do two things. You have to identify the strategy, and you have to properly identify the enemy. And the people that think that going into these conflicts and amping up the conflict make sense, are not attacking the proper enemy, and they certainly do not understand the strategy that they're being led into. Anyway, we'll catch up with you with another one in a bit.